All right, today is day 61. So let us begin. Capitalization, it's all review. It's just a long section today. So what I'm going to try to remember to do is at the end of the video, for those of you who want to check, I'll have up, um, I'll show the answers of what needs to be capitalized. So we're going to move right along to punctuation. Use a comma to separate contrasting statements. For example, he's from Idaho, comma, not Utah. I have an external distraction right now. Can you hear our dog whining to go out? She's going to have to wait until the video is over. Anyways, um, so we need to look at commas to separate contrasting statements. And the thing that's interesting is that in the example sentence, they put the comma in to show the contrasting statements. I don't think they did that on purpose, but it is what it is. So look at, we have no, Churchill isn't spelt with two H's, comma, but it is capitalized, said Miss Swan. Okay, so they um, snuck in the correct answer for the punctuation for separating contrasting statements, but there is still other punctuation that needs to go in there. So the first thing we notice is that someone is speaking. Uh, so you're going to need to get quotation marks put in around what they have said. So see if you can figure that out where the quotation marks are going to go. The next thing you need to know is that Churchill, in this case, is referencing a, a biography, a book. So Churchill would be underlined. Isn't is a contraction. So you would have that apostrophe between the N and the T where the O for not would be. You squish the letters together and put an apostrophe. Then we have two H's. I don't know if you remember this. Um, this was a, maybe a week or two ago. When you have something like H's used not in spelling but just as um, subjects, um, you would underline them. So you would underline the H's and when they're plural, uh, for this type of thing, you would put a punctuation, uh, put a apostrophe. So it should be an underlined H with an apostrophe S. But it is capitalized comma, said Miss Swan, period. So let's check and see what you did. All right, did you get where the quotation was? Quotation marks, no, comma. Churchill isn't spelled with two H's. There's the comma that they gave you. But it is capitalized, comma, quotation marks, said Miss Swan, period. Okay? All right, good. All right, next section is analogies. They want you to complete this analogy. Anthracite is to coal as emerald is to something. Okay, to figure this out, you would need to know what anthracite is and a good definition of what coal is. So grabbing the handy dandy dictionary, let's see what we've got here. Anthracite is a hard glossy coal that burns without much smoke. Okay, so it's a specific type of coal. And what is coal? Coal is a black solid combustible mineral. All right, so anthracite is a specific type of coal. Coal is the general, um, the general category of black hard minerals. So keeping that in mind, if anthracite is a special type of coal, then an emerald would be a special type of gem, a special type of jeweler, a special type of sapphire, or a special type of ring. Right? Um, an emerald is a special type of gem. So as anthracite is a special type of coal, Emerald is a special type of gem. So you would read the correct analogy as anthracite is to coal as emerald is to gem. Next section, part of speech, nouns. To show possession, that means ownership. So to show that a noun owns or possesses something, you use an apostrophe S. But where do you put that apostrophe S? In a singular noun, you just add the apostrophe S. For example, the dog's collar. A plural noun that ends in S adds an apostrophe after the S. So you can see that, horses corral. And a plural noun that does not end in S adds an apostrophe S. For example, the women's meeting. So what they want you to do is write the possessive form. So you have to figure out what it is 
that is be doing the possessing. So the buttons on a blazer, the buttons belong to the blazer. So it would be the blazer's buttons. Okay. A pet belonging to two children would be the children's pet. An association of doctors would be the doctor's association. A speech given by Mrs. Chavez would be Mrs. Chavez's speech. So let's see how you did just in listening to me if you had the um, punctuation correctly. Okay, so we have the blazer's buttons, the children's pet, the doctor's association, and Mrs. Chavez's speech. All right. The last section is sentence combining. There are four sentences to be combined into one sentence. So I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Now, for those of you who wanted to double check on the capitalization, okay, the um, letter read, you can see I abbreviated some stuff. Dear Abby, hi. Last Saturday, Grammy told us a fascinating story about having had chicken pox on St. Patrick's Day when she was nine. She wanted her mother to paint green circles around each mark. A minister heard the story and used it in a sermon entitled, Being Different Through Love. Your cousin, Nico. All right. Good job, everybody. God bless you.